On 23rd of June 2023, a mutiny broke out in Russia. The main leader of this mutiny was calling this a peaceful protest. Even though the men on the ground were moving towards the capital of the country, Moscow, using weapons and military vehicles. But I guess for Russia, that's just a peaceful protest. Anyhow, as this peaceful protest is moving towards Moscow, the military and Kremlin start preparing for the worst case scenario. After all, this is the biggest threat to power Putin has ever experienced in the last 24 years of being the democratically elected president of Russia. Democratic. <laughs> Funny. And to make things worse, all of this is happening at the hands of the private military Putin had created himself. In this video, we break down the rise, the fall, and perhaps the rise again of Wagner Group. So let's get started. Being a mercenary is one of the oldest professions on this planet. As long as we've existed, there's always been someone you can hire to fight for you or to kill someone. However, today's private military corporations are way more advanced than any of the mercenary groups of the past could even imagine. And the roots of these private military corporations and how they became these big juggernauts that they are today can be traced back to the end of the Cold War. Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. At the end of the Cold War, both East and West were demilitarizing, which meant a whole bunch of military men were now looking for jobs. Most of them adapted to a 9 to 5 schedule and started working in offices. However, a few of them just couldn't adapt to this new lifestyle. Some of them just craved that action and some just wanted more money that they couldn't find in the office world. And of course, as a mercenary, there is a lot of money to be made. And all of this coincided with a very specific change in the geopolitical scene. You see, more and more countries wanted to influence other countries without having to risk their own soldiers going to war. And all of this while maintaining plausible deniability. A key word that will be repeated many times in this video, plausible deniability. This need for plausible deniability combined with this influx of soldiers is what has given rise to the private military corporations. A private military corporation or a PMC is just a private military that can be hired by anyone who can afford them. Technically speaking, Osama bin Laden could have hired a PMC to fight his war of jihad, which you see is a bit of a problem. Because unlike a military of a country, there is no Congress, there is no red tape, there's nothing that governs how this PMC acts. They'll follow the orders of whoever pays them a whole bunch of money. Let's say you want to protect your assets like oil fields or mines in a foreign country. Or you just want to train a bunch of terrorists. Or I don't know, you just want to hire a bunch of goons to walk around a different country. You go to a PMC, you pay them a certain fee and they'll do it for you. You know, the best thing is you, the person who had hired this PMC to carry out terrorist attacks or whatever you want, can walk away at the end of the day saying, I don't know. I don't know nothing, man. I don't make the rules. I just work here. You just walk away. No one will ask you a single question. In other words, plausible deniability. Since the end of the Cold War, there has been a huge increase in number of PMCs across the globe. According to P.W. Singer, a political scientist and the author of the book Corporate Military, in 1990, for every 50 government soldiers, there was one private military soldier. Today, for every 10 government soldiers, not 50, there is one private military soldier. The business has been booming to say the least. And you know what else has boomed while the PMCs have boomed in business? It's the human rights violations. Wherever these PMCs go, human rights violations go skyrocketing through the roof. This increase in human rights violations is a direct result of one of the key benefits the governments find of using a PMC. Let's say America wants to carry out a military operation in Afghanistan. To use its own military, it will need to get a whole bunch of approvals. There will be a lot of oversight. Meanwhile, for using a PMC, you just pick up the phone and ask them to do a bunch of things. And there is no oversight. Now, this lack of oversight makes a PMC quick to respond to a terrorist threat or certain situations that are developing across the globe. However, it's the same lack of oversight that leads to numerous human rights violations because no one's asking them any questions at the end of the day. All this to maintain our good old friend, plausible deniability. A whole bunch of countries have used PMCs at different times in history. America's used them in Iraq, China's using them to protect their Silk Road initiative, and Russia is no different. The only thing different is Russia found a new business model to using a private military corporation. And that's exactly what this video is about. The situation in Russia was a bit tricky. Unlike America or Britain, 
the Russian constitution doesn't allow you to host or have a PMC on Russian ground, which meant Putin, as the democratically elected leader of Russia, had to get a bit innovative. After all, it's good to have a private military corporation, just in case, you know, someone threatens the democracy that you stand for. And out of the innovation that stemmed from Putin came Wagner Group. In the year 2014, a bunch of men started showing up in Crimea. During the Crimean War, these men would patrol the Russian-occupied Ukraine. However, officially, according to Russia, there were no such men. These men were just from these regions who wanted to protect their lands and declare independence. Based on investigations carried out by independent journalists from Russia, not from the West, these men who had started appearing in Crimea, a lot of them had previously worked for a company by the name of Selvonic Corps. Now, if we go just one more year back into history, that is 2013, same Selvonic Corp was hired by the dictator of Syria, Bashar al-Assad. And in Syria, this group was very badly defeated and were deported back to Russia. Meanwhile, the two owners of Selvonic Corp were arrested and persecuted for running a illegal mercenary group because it's illegal according to the Russian constitution. Makes sense so far. When in 2014, Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine, they needed men which they could plausibly deny existing. A group was formed by the name of Wagner, which was headed by Putin's right-hand man, Evgeny Prigozhin. And none of this was confirmed ever. It was finally confirmed in September of 2022. More on that later on, but let's continue the story. A group has been formed. You see, unlike the Selvonic Corps, which were registered in Hong Kong, Wagner Group was registered nowhere. There are no legal documents, corporate registrations, or bank accounts that exist in the name of Wagner Group. In order to understand how this firm works without ever having a bank account, you have to understand Evgeny Prigozhin and his friendship with Putin. So who is this guy? Prigozhin is an ex-convict who served about 10 years in the prisons of the Soviet Union. When he came out, the Soviet Union was just about to collapse. Perfect time and opportunity to be released from a prison for someone who's shady and wants to make a lot of money. Initially, he started selling hot dogs. And I don't know what he was mixing in those hot dogs because he made a lot of money. Within the first few years, he had made enough money selling hot dogs that he could buy a portion of a grocery store chain. From there, he went on to buy a whole bunch of businesses one after the other. From there, he got into the casino and gambling industry of St. Petersburg. And at the same time, a man by the name of Putin was the chairman of supervisory board of gambling and casinos in St. Petersburg. And it's believed that it was around this time that their bromance began. This bromance between the two became very clear once Putin, as a president now, started hosting other countries' presidents at Prigozhin's restaurant, giving Prigozhin the nickname Putin's chef. Now, of course, there's a lot more to their friendship than just eating at his restaurant. Over the years, Prigozhin's offered him plausible deniability, not just in the form of a private military corporation down the road, but in many other ways. For example, let's say Putin wants to influence the elections in America. He calls his friend Prigozhin, who then starts a business by the name of Internet Research Agency, IRA. And it's this IRA that does Putin's dirty work, from having huge troll armies to influencing the public opinion in America. All of this is done by Prigozhin, not by Putin. Now, how does Putin pay Prigozhin? Of course, by giving government contracts. Over the years, Putin has given Prigozhin a whole bunch of lucrative government contracts, which especially ballooned during the Ukrainian conflict. And if someone was to actually ask you, which they will never ask you since you are the democratically elected leader of Russia, you can always just say, hey, these are just government contracts. They were earned fair and square plausible deniability. Now that you have a better understanding of the relationship between Prigozhin and Putin and how the money between the two flows, let's look at Wagner Group's activities from Syria, which is one of the 30 countries they operate in. When the Syrian dictator brought Wagner into the country to protect its oil fields, a new business model was conceived. Now, as a dictator at war, you don't have cash sitting around. So it was decided that a contract would be signed between the Syrian government and Evropolis, a Wagner subsidiary, basically a shell company, so that the Wagner name doesn't have to be registered anyway. And if you translate the contract signed, Evropolis would get 25% of oil production from every single oil field they took back from the rebels. Within the first few years of being in Syria, Wagner had already taken over about four of the largest oil fields in Syria which are believed to be making about $10 billion each year in oil production. 
and Wagner would continue to make money every year as long as they continue to protect these oil fields. Further, as a form of payment, in 2019, the Syrian government gave the Wagner Group oil and gas drilling rights on 30,000 square miles within Russian land and about 2,000 square miles in offshore rigs. And this time, the contract was once again given to three different subsidiaries which are known to be connected to Wagner Group and Brigosin. This business model of sucking dry a country's resources is what they have implemented in all 30 countries that they have operated in so far. All of this money then gets funneled back to Russia to pay for Wagner Group's expenses, all the while making Prigozhin and Putin a whole bunch of money. Hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And while I'm reading this, I'm like, what the f- what went wrong? Why the rift? You guys are making so much money. Just continue. Turns out the main reason for this rift is the Ukrainian war. You see, everywhere in the world, for the last decade or so, Wagner Group has operated as the top dog fighting its well-trained men with militias and terrorists that are unorganized and underfunded. With full support from Kremlin and the military infrastructure of Russia, flying in and out on military planes, being given weaponry that's only accessible to the Russian military, they were living the life. However, in Ukraine, the story was the opposite. They were forced to fight in close quarters with very well-trained military from Ukraine who had been preparing for this war ever since 2014. Due to the extended nature of this war, thousands of prisoners from Russia were incorporated into Wagner Group, making them quite weak and not really organized. At the same time, the Russian military, which had supported them throughout the world, couldn't support them anymore because they had to focus on supporting their own troops who are fighting on the ground. It's hard to really know what triggered Prigozhin because it could be either the loss of his men in this extended war that they were fighting or just looking at how ill-prepared the Russian military was. It's hard to know what was going on through his head, but towards the beginning of 2023 and the end of 2022, Prigozhin started being very vocal about his opinion on the military of Russia through videos that were publicly accessible to the Russian people. That's a big no-no in Russia. You don't just go out there and speak stuff against the military. But just like that, one morning, Prigozhin woke up and decided to start marching towards Moscow in the process he took over a military base, a few airfields, fought with the Russian military, just a whole bunch of shit. In the same time, the Western media was excited about this new news from Russia. They dubbed this a military coup, which it seemed like to be one. They declared it a very strategic plan of Prigozhin and also declared that this is the end of Putin. For some reason, 24 hours later, Prigozhin decided to back out. Just like that. It's like a soap opera. Let's go back to what's going to happen with Wagner and finish this video. It's been a long one. When this whole altercation between the Wagner Group and the Russian military happened, everyone assumed that this is the fall of Wagner and Prigozhin. Typically, you die in Russia for doing such dumb shit. Clearly, he is still alive. The Wagner Group still continues to operate in four continents and 30 countries. No changes there, and it's about a month since this whole thing took place. All of this money and influence that Wagner Group provides Putin is hard to get somewhere else. So it's hard to believe that Putin will end Wagner Group. It'll perhaps just be called something else because you gotta keep in mind, this group never existed to begin with. That's the story of the rise, the fall, and the rise again of the Wagner Group. I'll see you in some time. Peace.